When Diane first heard about her brother's passing and that he left her several items, she was surprised. They hadn't been in contact for two decades now. People said her brother lived a reclusive life, but it wasn't until she stumbled upon a painting among the items that things really took a strange and unexpected turn. Initially, Diane had no expectations, but when she stumbled upon the cheap but pretty painting, memories from her childhood came flooding back. The rustic imagery of a church building surrounded by nature had always hung in their living room, and the moment she got a hold of it, Diane was convinced she could restore it. Diane decided to sit down with the painting. With tender strokes, she meticulously brushed away decades of grime. After all this time, filth and dust had been building up on the surface. But underneath, the painting still seemed in good condition. The colors were still vibrant and lively, but also revealed something else. As Diane ran her fingers over the painting's surface, she felt some irregularities that were hardly visible to the naked eye, but clearly noticeable to the touch. It felt like something was stitched to the back of the canvas, something that wasn't supposed to be there in the original painting. It piqued her curiosity, making her realize she'd need to remove the canvas from its frame to uncover what was underneath. The frame would be hard to remove without damaging the painting, but Diane had steady hands, and she knew she had to uncover this strange mystery. So it was time to get started. Right after she began the delicate task of freeing the canvas from its frame, a soft rattling sound caught her attention. Something was lightly tapping against the frame's wooden edge. With each careful movement, she grew more curious about what might be concealed behind it. But this object didn't seem to be stitched to the back. Diane was shocked when a key slipped out from behind the canvas and landed on the table. She stared at it, surprised. Instead of picking it up, she carefully turned the canvas over to see what was stitched to the back, hoping that it would reveal more than just the key. Tightly stitched to the back of the canvas was an old piece of parchment paper folded neatly. Its edges had yellowed with age, and its contents remained invisible from this view. Diane realized that removing it would require utmost care to ensure the fragile paper didn't tear, or the canvas would be damaged. Setting the canvas aside gently, Diane reached for the key that had unexpectedly fallen out earlier. As she turned it over in her hands, she noticed a small cross delicately engraved on its surface. But there was nothing else on it. The key made Diane wonder even more. What door or box did it open? Diane placed the key down and focused her attention back on the canvas. With steady hands, she began to delicately remove the stitches. She wanted to see what was on it, but was careful not to damage the painting. Each stitch she removed made her more eager to uncover the parchment's secret. As the final stitch came loose, Diane gently extracted the folded parchment. As she began to unfold it, she was taken aback by its size. The paper expanded considerably more than she had anticipated. Holding it out in front of her, she realized this wasn't just a small note but potentially a detailed document or map. She laid out the large sheet of paper on her workbench to inspect it further. The fabric looked old and a bit worn down, but the markings on it were still clearly visible. The markings indicated a town map of some sort. The amount of detail on the map was incredible. The lines and lettering were beautifully crafted. It was clear that a true artist made this, she thought. Diane saw street names, rivers, and even the most narrow of creeks being displayed on the paper. But the maker wanted one building to stand out the most. It was circled multiple times in red pencil. Diane found herself examining a map with unfamiliar surroundings, noticing a town named Cedarbrook. Despite her efforts to recall where she had heard the name before, she couldn't remember. Determined, she decided to investigate further by searching online. After discovering that Cedarbrook was close by, she canceled her plans and drove to the town to explore the church depicted in her painting. Upon arriving, she found the church's door easily opened, heightening her curiosity. As Diane made her way through the main hall, she saw empty church benches and an altar with burning candles in the distance. That meant that there was clearly someone here. She called out and a door in the back of the church opened up. 
a pastor with a long white robe entered the room. He introduced himself as the religious leader of the congregation and asked Diane if he could help her. Diane introduced herself. Hi, my name is Diane Lombard and I'm... But before she could continue speaking, she saw the pastor's eyes grow in shock. The man clearly seemed startled by her introduction. The two individuals looked at each other in confusion for a moment. What's wrong, Pastor? Diane eventually said. She wondered what about her name triggered the old man so. But the pastor didn't answer her question. He simply said, come along, as he turned around and exited the main hall swiftly. Diane followed the robed man to a room behind the altar without question, marveling at the walls filled with beautifully crafted paintings. The pastor pointed out a particular painting depicting the church's founder, who shared Diane's unique last name. Surprised, Diane clutched the key she had found, and the pastor revealed that the founder was her ancestor. He explained that receiving the painting meant she was meant to have it. When the pastor asked to see the key, Diane handed it to him, and he revealed a small, heavy-set door hidden behind the painting leaving Diane shocked and eager to discover what lay behind it. The pastor explained that the doorway behind this painting was discovered years ago, but they never managed to open it, so the contents of the area behind the door were a mystery to him as well. We've tried everything to open it, but without a key, it seemed impossible to crack. But I believe that all of that will change today, the robed man said. He handed the key back to Diane and asked her to do the honors. Diane slowly brought the key forward, placing it in the heavy metal keyhole. It fits, she shouted excitingly. Her hands turned the key clockwise until Diane heard the mechanism pop. The door opened without any creak. It was well oiled for being this old. Behind it, the two individuals saw a spiral staircase heading downwards into a dark space. It looked scary, but that wasn't going to deter Diane or the pastor. Diane followed the man through the doorway and down the set of stairs. The stairway went deep, way deeper than they initially thought. Diane could feel the air getting cooler and thicker as they ventured downwards. A strange vibration could be felt as they navigated in the dark abyss of the church. How far down do you think we are? Diane asked her robed guide. The old man shrugged as if to say that he had no idea as well. This was new to both of them. Eventually they reached the bottom. They couldn't see much, but they knew it was a vast chamber because their voices echoed far. The pastor lit the candle he brought with him, and then they saw it. The room was mostly empty, consisting of just a concrete floor and bare stone walls. But right in the center of it stood a large wooden chest. It was beautifully crafted, with ornate carvings that struck a sense of familiarity with Diane. They were the same markings that decorated her map. The pastor turned his attention over to Diane, who was now more than ready to break open this chest. The old man said that many believed that there was hidden treasure buried in this church somewhere. Your ancestor was wealthy and mysterious, so there could be many things in this chest. They walked over to the centerpiece of the room and saw that there was no lock on it. That's a nice surprise for a change, the pastor said as he smiled at Diane. Diane insisted that they open the lid together this time, so after a few deep breaths they lifted the heavy cover. The top fell backward, and now Diane and the pastor could see inside. The chest was filled to the brim with dozens of paintings. Each one of them topped the beauty of anything Diane had ever restored in the past. They were all painted in a similar style to the one Diane had back at her workshop. The pastor smiled and said that he knew about some details in them. He pointed out that each painting resembled a different location in the town of Cedarbrook. They were major historical landmarks that shaped the town in its early days. But there was more to be discovered at the bottom. They lifted all the paintings out of the chest and placed them carefully against the walls of the basement. That's when they saw that there was something else hidden away in the chest. Diane saw a brown leather journal. It was obviously handcrafted because it held the golden emblem of the church in its center. They opened the journal and saw a long list of entries made by the founder of the church. It proved that the original owner was indeed the painter of everything inside this building, including the treasures in this chest. It said that these paintings were created as a memoir of sorts, a way to preserve the town's original spirit. 
The founders said that whoever found this chest was worthy of inheriting the church's most prized possessions. But these paintings were too valuable to be sold for money. They needed to be seen and honored. That's why Diane and the pastor agreed that they would be put up for display in an exhibition. The news of the age-old mystery finally being unveiled spread far and wide. Everyone wanted to see what Diane and the pastor had found behind the centuries-long closed door. The paintings were preserved perfectly and didn't need any restoration from Diane. So once the exhibition opened, they got massive appeal. Within a few months, the gallery received thousands of visitors, both locally and nationally. Their discovery even got news coverage on a nationally televised broadcasting station. But the most important part was that the paintings rekindled the town's pride, forever immortalizing its beautiful past and renewing the town's unity toward the future. If this story touched you as much as it did us, you should watch this video. Old woman had this doll for 70 years. When she died, police made a stunning discovery inside it. Click here to get the full story.